One of the most talked about subjects in bushcraft is fire making. There are many different primitive ways of lighting fire. And one of the more interesting is the use of the fire piston. We'll be having a look at a fairly generic model and how to use it, how to create that ember, and how to turn that ember into a useful flame. Stay tuned. So this is our fire piston. This particular make and model is fairly typical of what you can acquire. There are a few different ones on the market. And this one essentially has all the features you would want to have. You have a metal body cylinder. The knurled ends give you good grip. And on this end, that brass fitting will unscrew. And you'll notice you have an O-ring which makes for an airtight seal. Now that's the bottom of the cylinder. This end, that knob pulls out and as you can see we have a pair of O-rings here. Uh, all these O-rings help to keep the air contained within the cylinder when the piston is being pushed down. Also if you look at the end of the cylinder you'll notice there's a recess and that's where we put our char material. When you place this together, if you try and compress it closed, you'll notice the cylinder is wanting to push it out because the air is trapped in there. That's why we have this end here. If I loosen that up, I can press that in. Air escapes out the bottom and when I tighten it up, that makes it ready for transport. Now, the way this works is very much the way a diesel engine works. So, when this cylinder rod is pressed all the way down, we are compressing the air contained within. Now, one thing you need to remember about compressed air is that when you compress air, it warms up. Not by very much, but if you compress it a great deal, very rapidly indeed, then it can get quite hot to a flash point, several hundred degrees. Possibly not enough to light paper, but certainly enough to light char material or a char-like material that has a relatively low flash point. There are a few of these available that are actually made out of a clear perspex or, or acrylic. Uh, when you smack down on them, you'll actually see that flash of light from when the compression is at maximum. So the trick is to get full compression as fast as possible, and that will create enough heat to ignite a piece of char in the base. We'll have a look a little bit more about that next. Now, this is made out of cotton, 100% pure cotton. It may look vaguely familiar to you, and it will be if you've ever been to the dentist, because that's exactly what this is. This is a dental uh, cotton swab that's put between the cheek and your jaw to help keep your teeth dry while the dentist is working on you. And these you can buy online relatively cheaply. They're not, you know, they come in packets of about 50 of them. And if you throw a handful of these into your char box when you're making char cloth, or instead of making char cloth, you throw a few of these in, they will shrink down in size as they turn into proper char material. Now, one thing that I have, which I accessorize this with. If I unscrew the cap, now some manufacturers will sell these with a little ferro rod inside of them. That ferro rod's nice and by all means keep it, you know, use it somewhere. But they'll tell you, oh yes, we have this as a backup in case this isn't working. Well, this won't work unless you have char. So I put that ferro rod in a little survival kit of mine because, you know, nothing wrong with it. But what I did is I took a stainless steel straw, which are these days fairly easy to acquire. Uh, many bargain shops sell them, so they don't even cost anything. 
and they have exactly the right diameter and if you cut a section of it the same length as the little ferro rod that would fit in there you have a little cylinder made of stainless steel that fits inside this piston rod and if you look very closely you'll notice the tip has some black in it and basically what I did is having turned a number of these into char material I just gave a little roll and a little squeeze and filled this entire cylinder with char material so this gives me a source of char which I carry inside the piston itself now if I just screw this back on another thing I tend to carry with these uh, when I carry that is this and this is just a little wooden toothpick holder and contained inside are toothpicks uh, not just ordinary toothpicks mind you uh, I've got about 25 of these in here uh, two dozen will fit easier but I've managed to stuff 25 in and if you look very closely you'll notice that there's a bit of yellow on the tip and if you've watched my earlier video on brimstone matches or sulfur matches uh, you will know that about 1500 years ago the Chinese and at about the same time the Romans developed what would later become known as the brimstone match or sulfur match and the, re the idea being if you had a fine point on a conventional uh, brimstone match you would touch that to your ember and within a few moments especially if you just gently blow on it uh, the sulfur will ignite and you end up having a lit fire without having to put it into you know, your ember into a bird's nest blow into it and create billowing clouds of smoke everywhere which especially if you're using it indoors is a bit of an issue so what we have here is a toothpick which is also a brimstone match and I'll put a link in the description so you can see how the brimstone matches are made obviously I'll make more conventional ones in that video but by doing exactly the same thing with toothpicks you can actually create a slimline version and there's a couple reasons for having the toothpick as a brimstone match for a start I can stick it inside of the cylinder a little bit and dig a bit of char out with it and that means I now have some char material that I can press into the end of my piston and the next thing I need to do is lubricate all the way around and although something like Vaseline or any kind of you know, WD-40 or 3-in-1 oil anything like that or especially if you have like a lithium grease or whatever is convenient you can do it with that or a little bit of spit it's old-fashioned but it works if you lubricate it it will allow the tube to slide more quickly and again we need to get our compression rapidly now what I usually find is that if you try to just smash it down with your hand some people can do it and some people will find oh it takes about 15 or 20 tries before I can get it to light uh, I've heard people suggest that it's because you need to heat it up or something like this it's not true they just didn't get it fast enough the first 14 times and on the 15th they did I find that just smacking this down on a hard surface works particularly well uh, one thing I will say about that though or two things I'll say first of all you want it to have a moment fully smacked down before you pull the plunger out or else it may not properly ignite the other thing is you want to be reasonably quick about it but not too quick or the oxygen will be used up by the ember and it'll go out so I usually I'm right-handed so I will smack down with my right hand I'll then transfer it to my left hand and then pull the piston out that gives it a moment to actually properly catch and about half the time I get it on the first try the other half second or third try uh, when I'm smacking down if I'm trying to bang in I'm, full disclosure I'm not that great at it so I, I tend not to do it that way because it's a lot of work and my hand ends up hurting so I just do it the easy way Let's have a look. 
Not least because I don't want to upset my wife. I'm doing this on the breadboard so I don't damage the countertop at all. But basically, what you want to do is, and there you have it, one ember, which if I tease it out with my brimstone toothpick, and gently blow on it. I now have my flame. Now, obviously, you don't have to have char stored in there, but it is a good idea. And you don't have to use the brimstone toothpicks, but it's a good idea. And again, this is about four inches long. That's about two inches long just over. They don't take up much space in the pocket. They don't weigh that much. Um, it is an interesting way of lighting a fire. It's in some regards not the necessarily the easiest way. It's not the most difficult either. And for a lot of us who do bushcraft, you like to have two or three, maybe more, different ways of lighting fire. Not because we need to, because to be fair, with modern lighters or even just lifeboat matches or something of this nature, you don't need to use primitive technology, but it is kind of fun. And it's part of the reason for doing bushcraft is to learn the primitive technology and be able to do it. So it is enjoyable. It is fun. It's not particularly expensive. There are some that are, but you don't have to get one of those. And um, if you want to try it out, I think you might find it's uh, kind of cool. You may have to practice a couple, three, four times before you get it, but once you get the knack of it, it's pretty easy, and, and like I say, it's kind of fun. Anyway, give it a try. If you enjoyed this video, please like, please share, please subscribe. If you want to give us a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate that very much. It helps with the algorithm, and it means I can make more videos. So, look forward to seeing you again. Have a good one.